What's up everybody, my name is Will Carmack. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make Mario Kart boxes in After Effects. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, obviously. Uh, and I recently made a video for Adobe Max where I kind of used the Mario Kart boxes as a source of inspiration for these like Adobe iconography things that explode and send me into a Photoshop world. It's a crazy video, you have to go watch it on my Instagram. But uh, that being said, let's hop into After Effects. So all we need to do to start is we'll go to Layer, New, and uh, Solid. Let's just make a perfectly square triangle. What is this called? This is a freaking square. All right, beautiful. What we need, guys, is a square. And basically, we're gonna recreate a 3D element by using 2D shapes. So the next step is to make this a 3D layer, bam. And so you can see that right here, you have the three point axes, Y, X, and Z. You can toggle through camera perspectives, guys. I don't know if you know this by just clicking C. If you look at my mouse, it's changing between all of these icons. I can now spin around my 3D scene with these guys. Like if I hit C and it hits this tool, it's the move tool. This one's like the zoom me out tool. And then this one's the orbit tool. So this is where we'll be able to make our 3D box. So let's see, let's find a good angle. So you'll see what I'm about to do. So so, this is super important always for operating with motion graphics and 2D stuff and 3D stuff. You see all these arrows right here, this is the anchor point. If we hit Y, you see now we have the anchor point tool pulled up. We're gonna click on these arrows and move it to the very side of this square. You'll see why in a second. So, you grab Y for the anchor point and you just wanna move it on its axis to the side. We can hit C right now to grab our orbit tool to see how it's looking. Love that. And now we will take this white solid, actually, you know what, let's rename it to side one and duplicate side one. And if we just hit R to bring down our rotation and rotate it on the Y axis, you'll see we can bring it out to build a box. And I think this would be 270. Hit C to orbit around, check how that's looking. Looks great. So I'll just take this exact same box, hit Y to move the anchor point over to the side here. Check to see if that's flush and accurate. Now I'll take this side, duplicate it, hit R to drop down rotation, and I will rotate this, let's see how many degrees, 90, boom. So now we hit C to orbit. You can see where our box is starting to come together. Hit Y, move the anchor point over to the side. Double check that our box is flush. And of course he has, you know, duplicate the side, hit R to drop down rotation, and rotate it 90 degrees. All right, let's duplicate this side, hit R, close the box up like this. And now we can look around our box. We have like a freaking perfect box. Is that not crazy? Okay, so now what I've done is I've created a little camera in here just to be able to look at the box normally now. Let's click and select all of the sides. Oh wait, just kidding, ignore that. We'll come up to layer, new, and null object. Let's make it a 3D object, of course. Let's even name it cube spinner, spiner. All right, you select all the sides, grab the pick whip, and click on the cube. So now you can see if we spin the rotation, the whole cube is spinning. But what we need to do now, of course, let's switch it to two views. So we can look top down at our cube here. So we can see our camera and our cube. Let's hit Y on this null object to move the anchor point to the very center. So now if we look at the left here, when we spin the Y rotation on this cube, our cube is perfectly spinning. Oh, that's so glorious. So that's a quick tutorial on how to make a 3D cube, if at the very least. And just for fun, I'm going to drop down the rotation on this null, click on Y, go to the very end and just type in like 10. So while I animate, the box will float like this. Um, and to create the Mario Kart look, you can just set these long rotation keyframes like this. And to get the up and down movement of the box, if we drop down P, click on P, and we right click on this and hit separate dimensions, this allows us to actually just control only one of the X, Y, and Z positions at a time. And so your keyframes won't affect the other two. So this means we can create keyframes just on Y, so it's rotating and floating up and down. So if we alt click on Y position, I'll type in wiggle, parentheses one comma 30. That'll give it a nice kind of up and down bounce. You can see it, it's actually really subtle. I'm actually gonna change it to 310. Hey, I like that. Kind of like just enough random up and down movement. It's a little crazy, so I'll actually change the spinny 
to spin 14 times over the span of this comp. That's how you make a spinny crazy cube. Now for all things Mario Kart. So I'll just single out one of these sides so we can just look straight at it. Bam, I'll even switch to one view. So the effects that we will need to use for this because I'll show you a clip right here of the Mario Kart box I'm referencing. We need to make it look a little rainbowy, translucency, and checkerboardy, which we can do perfectly in After Effects. So we can type in the effect checkerboard and we can throw that onto our uh, side right here. Now, this is obviously crazy what just happened, but there's just a setting over here in the effects panel where you go from blending mode to stencil alpha right here. Bam, fix the problem. Okay, so you can just crank up the slider right here. And I think uh, that looks pretty nice. Give it that Mario Kart checker box look. And then in the effects panel, if we type in four color gradient, or just four, yeah, four color gradient. Drag that in here. You can see what we're doing, where we're going with this. We can drag in all the points to force this to be a colorful little mess. Um, I'm too lazy to look up the exact colors right now, but pick the colors that are like the cool translucent color in the Mario box. I'm pretty sure they're all kind of like light pastels. I think the blue could be, yeah. Ooh, that looks good. Look at that, guys. So we're going to actually duplicate this side and we're gonna hit M to drop down the mask that we made. And we are actually gonna hit the square, the rectangle tool at the top and create another one right here. Because you'll know there's a little border on the uh, outside of these Mario boxes. So that's what we're creating right now. Once you kind of got this mask in a good border shape, we can take off the checkerboard effect and the four color gradient effect and change the mask to intersect. And let's hit inverted because now intersect mask just fills in all the masks in between all the masks if that makes any sense. So now we have our border and our checkerboard inside. This is almost already perfect. And let's actually take the side with the checkerboard and turn the opacity down. Yeah, because there we will be eventually putting a question mark inside this box, so we need to be able to see it. Now that we have this side pretty much finished, I will color label these as pink, so we know which two sides correlate with each other. If we isolate side four, we can just rinse and repeat that by copying and pasting the effects from each layer. Bam. Remember, we want to duplicate the side. And then let's see if we can just copy and paste this mask, or if that doesn't work at all. Wow, I think it worked perfectly. And so on this top layer, let's get rid of the two effects. Bam. So you can just copy and paste your mask and your effects. So now if we solo those top two layers, you can see our Mario box coming together. Remember to make the opacity a little lower on the checkerboard side. And BRB, just copy and paste these for the all the other squares. And now if we will take a look at this lovely box I've created, as it's spinning, I will cut to the layers panel here. You'll see that I have labeled all the sides. Oh gosh, how embarrassing, what am I doing? These two sides need to be a different color. Let's make them purple. So now every side has that intersected mask and the four color gradient and the checkered board applied to all of them. So now we have our perfect box. Now we just have to create the question mark, which is arguably the easiest part. So let's take our box right here. Layer, new, text, question mark. Scale that bitch up. I already have the font selected that I thought was perfect. The font is called System, and it is bold. Let's make it a 3D object, of course. We can move the question mark to be inside the middle of the box, like this. So now if we take a look at the left, you'll see that the question mark is inside the box. Move this bitch down left. Okay, that looks good, but obviously you're probably thinking, Will, the question mark looks so still. Well, do you remember what I told you about the position separation dimensions? Let's drop down P. Right click. You'll see separate dimensions. Separate them. So now we can create a keyframe for just the up and down motion. Let's go Alt. Hold Alt and click the keyframe. Wiggle. Parentheses. How about 210? The numbers are always random for me. It needs to be faster. Eight, ten. Mm, okay, maybe it needs to go a little higher. Eight. 
Okay, this is too crazy. I don't know what I'm doing at this point. We go 130. I don't know if you can see this, but it looks nice. The question mark is kind of doing its own thing, going up and down, and I like it. Because remember, if we take a look at the reference material, the box spins at a completely separate force and velocity than the question mark. The question mark is just kind of floating in free space inside there. And honestly, if we want to make this look a little more stylistic, Let's create really long keyframes for the spin position so we can make it rotate. Oop, oop. Do you see that? Do you see that right there? Classic mistake people make. Let's make, let's change the, uh, the freaking anchor point to the middle. Bam. Gorgeous. Can't believe I made that mistake in front of you guys. All right, so yes, we've created a keyframe for our rotation. Let's have it rotate like a few times. Uh, we could probably make it rotate way more. I'll start with like negative 20. It's probably gonna be crazy. Oh yeah, look at this. This is really nice. Okay, so I've created kind of like an organic flow with the box here. Vario Mario Cardi. So at this point, we can just like play around with the look. Cause right now, I think the grids are all kind of maybe a little too small. So if I take this side right here and I crank the width up, we can play around with the look. Ooh, I actually really like that a lot. And what's nice is if you actually copy this effect, and apply it to all the other ones. It actually doesn't add another checkerboard effect. It actually just updates the current one that you have. So now, you'll see that they've all been applied here. Not gonna lie, it kinda looks good with the border. But I'm just gonna take it off all of the sides that have the border. Now look at that. And then if we wanna add some final stylistic touches, let's take everything pre-compose it and we'll call this maybe like glowy retro look because now the box looks great but we kind of want to implement some kind of retro look am i right first of all we can put some deep glow on there it's a great plug-in oh gosh you see this let's just turn the exposure down let's see maybe the radius actually okay all right i'm feeling that that looks pretty good you can actually stylize it with input making the glow effect different areas. Ooh, that looks great. I like that. And then maybe throw in a little bit of noise. So I'll grab that from the effects panel over here. Let's see, crank that up a bit. You can see what it's doing because when the noise is off, it just looks too perfect. We want to make it a little video gamey. That looks good. Yeah, I love it. And this is just an extra effect. So I'll get rid of noise and you can get this on AE scripts, but it's called Retro dither, literally the coolest effect ever. Uh, what it does is it makes things look old 8 bitty, so I can change it to like 8 color adaptive, which would be like a color style that they would use in old games. And I can turn it to like 4 times. Don't really know what that means technically, but look at that. It's replicating an old school game look. I can turn it to 32 bit. You'll see now it's like completely the most digital version, like 8 bit arcade mode. Let's try 16. Huh, <laughs> doesn't that look crazy? So yeah, this is retro dither. Great effect. What I'll do sometimes is, see, I'll, I'll I'll have this, which is such a crazy effect, I really shouldn't apply it to the whole thing. I'll duplicate it and get rid of the retro dither on it, and I'll kind of like create a mask in the center. Bam. So if I isolate this layer and feather it out a little bit, you can see what I'm doing. Uh, so the front of this object will be basically in focus, and now the borders are retro edgy. So it's kind of like blending, blending them together. You can even copy this mask paste it on the one below and invert it. So it's like perfectly separated. They don't blend together. And you can have like your crystal clear middle, but your pixely digitally edges. I think it looks really fucking cool. So this is how you create like a Mario box. And if you watch this whole tutorial, you'll be able to understand how to apply this to like literally anything. For like example, I used this effect to make those Adobe boxes in that Adobe Max video. So. It's a, it's a cool effect you can apply to a lot of things. And actually, let's do, let's go crazy one more. Let's pre-compose this box. I'll scale it, scale it down a little bit right here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We'll just try and make it even more like old video gamey. I'll put the noise effect back on there, crank it up. Let's see, it looks too crazy. I'll use, yeah. Love that, love that. Looks good. And then Venetian blinds is a great effect. Uh, Cause you can make it 
have that hologram look where the lines are all like sideways. You just have to change the angle to 90 degrees, play with the width a little bit. See that? Small detail, but you know, it's, it sells it. Ooh. Yeah, so that's just some extra blendy stuff. Looks pretty good, right? Um, I actually did this whole tutorial yesterday and I hated how it looked. Um, but here's a quick example of what it looked like in that tutorial. When you can just like take an item like this, which you've created in After Effects and 3D track it into a scene. It's pretty freaking cool. You can basically create Mario boxes in After Effects uh, and just track them into any scene you want. So yep, that is the tutorial. That is how you make a Mario box in After Effects. I'm, I'm looking over here now because I think that camera died. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Time to thank today's sponsor, freaking, freaking Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform from online stores to marketing tools. I usually say that sentence backwards, so what, that's why the cadence was weird. Did you know that they have a portfolios and galleries options where you can upload your photography work to award-winning designer templates? Basically, allowing you to show off your photography to the world in the coolest way possible. Award-winning, what the frick? So if you're a photographer, sign up with Squarespace. They also have amazing analytics that are super user-friendly, and I'm kind of like a stupid person, and so I need to be able to look at graphs and charts that are uh, readable, you know what I mean? And so if you want to scale your business and know the numbers uh, in a really easy, user-friendly way, use Squarespace. Best place to scale your business online digitally, Moving on! You can embed all of your social medias into the website itself so you can stay connected with their connected services. If you're a SoundCloud rapper, put that thing straight into your website. Instagram fashionista, embed your Instagram. This way people can come to your website not only to buy your products, check out your stuff, they can find your other platforms. So stay connected with Squarespace. Best part is I got you hooked up with a discount code. Squarespace.com slash Will Carmack will get you 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Yeah. Love you guys. I hope everyone learned something today and where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will and have a nice day. I'm so scared that one of these cameras died. I just bought a monitor earlier today so I can, I'll finally be able to know. <sighs> bye. Okay, bye.